Hey and welcome to this Flash Workshop. This is a response to kind of to my 50 second website in which you tried to make a website in under 50 seconds. This is the slow version, okay, the more mellow one, in which we're going to look at the code in a bit more detail and what we do. But basically it's a bare bones website that doesn't necessarily look pretty, but just functions really easily and stuff. So it's kind of good for making a mock-up if you want to or if you've got a presentation or something like that. I wouldn't recommend it for any aspiring designers out there. But um, it does function well and, you know, it's okay. Um, right, this is what we're going to do. If I just publish that movie. So, we've got a 1 there, and I click on button 2, it changes to a 2, a 3, it changes to a 3, and a 4, it changes to a 4. Uh, nothing that fancy, but up in the timeline up here, you can see I've got 4 keyframes and on those four keyframes what you could do is say import a Photoshop image background or something or some text you want or create another new layer and put another four keyframes in and just have it so you can quickly change between your web pages and stuff so you know it's, it's quite good in that sense and you could also change the size of the document I mean this if I go down to the properties down here you can see the file size the size of the document is 550 by 400 pixels that's not really a good web size but you could change that and you know make it all a bit more funky and stuff and perhaps you know add rollovers to the buttons and things um, right so let's have a go at this I'm going to create a new document and this is an action script 2 document you know it, we're going to put the, the code on the actual buttons in this so we're not going to be doing it all in the timeline so it is really for beginners right what I'm going to do is I'm going to label up this first layer and we're going to call this buttons okay and then down the side here in my toolbar I'm going to left click on the oval tool and then I'm going to click using my left mouse button and drag an oval we're holding shift so it maintains the aspect ratio so I get a nice round oval notice that I haven't got a stroke on it if I had a stroke on it and I just clicked once, the stroke wouldn't be selected. And if I convert that to a button, it wouldn't be part of the button. I tend to click and drag over it using the left mouse button to select everything. It's just a habit now that it gets used to and it's quite good to do that sort of thing. Um, I then right click, convert it to a symbol and make it a button. And I want to call this circle underscore btn for button. This name actually means nothing in the sense of terms. It's just so you can help find it in the library with the underscore btn. And I'm going to OK that. Right, so there's my first button. Now I'm going to put my actions on this button because when I duplicate it, I'm going to duplicate it with the actions so I don't need to write the actions again. So I'm going to type on open condition, which is the normal bracket. Uh, go down and select press close the condition now we've got a condition which is saying when we press something now if I open up the event this is what's going to happen when we press the button so these are the event handlers I type go to and with a capital A stop with a capital S then I need to open up a condition again and this is which frame we're going to go to I'm going to choose frame 1 close the condition semicolon and close the event handler the semicolon actually if you press this auto syntax auto format thing generally it will sort of like put that in for you so you don't really have to worry all the time about that okay right that's our first button as you can see it's going to go to and stop frame one um, we're going to make this four times now so I want to hold down alt and click and drag on that button and it duplicates the button this is a shortcut for a lot of Adobe programs actually as well. Alt, left click and drag again. Keep holding Alt, but just let go of the click. And now I've got four buttons there. Now I'm just going to evenly space these and align these up. So if I click and drag over the buttons, and up here I've got my align panel. If you're working in CS3, it might be uh, down somewhere or you might have it on the side somewhere. You might not even see it here. So if you go to Window, you can always find the align tool there or it's Control K is the shortcut. Right, so I'm going to align these and make sure that to the stage is not selected. See if it's down, it's selected. If it's up, it's not selected. And here's my space, and I'm just going to space those evenly, and they'll shift into position, and I'm going to align them straight with each other. Now if I come back here, you can see they're quite nicely spaced and aligned. 
Right, on the timeline up here, I'm going to insert a frame. And now those buttons last for four whole frames. And that's one instance. Actually, it's four buttons, but it's they exist on this one timeline for four frames. And then I'm going to left click on the first one. Do you notice how I click off as well? If they're all selected like this and I click on one, it doesn't get rid of it. So I have all four of them selected. I left click off them and then click on the first one. Right, so that goes to number one. I click on the second one and this one's going to go to frame two. I click on the third one and this one's going to go to frame three. And I click on the fourth one and this one's going to go to frame four. Okay, so we need some frames for these to go to now. So I'm going to go up to here and create a new layer by clicking on that page type symbol. And I'm going to click back to frame one in this new blank frame. And we're going to call this pages. Okay, right, I'm going to get the type tool. This is going to represent our content. I'm going to click in here and type our one. Now, just in case your font isn't that size and smaller, you might have be able to change it down here. Now this is CS4 again, CS3 is slightly different, um, and but you can change the size generally quite easily by just selecting it and choosing the different characters. You might have to select over, if I'm like this, do you notice how it doesn't change? So either you have to be on the arrow tool, and you can choose the one and then it will change, or if you double click and you're inside of that, I highlight it and then it will change. Okay, All right, I'm going to return to the arrow tool. Just a tip for you here, if I click off here, if I press V, I change back to the arrow tool. Okay, so it's just a quick way of switching between the arrow tool. Right, if I click in the first frame here, um, there's my first keyframe, then I left click in the second frame and I'm going to insert a keyframe and I'm going to double click on the one, highlight it and change it to a two. Now here's a little shortcut for you. I'm in the key. I'm in the keyframe here up on the timeline. If I press F6, that makes another keyframe for me as well. So I'm going to change that to a three, and I'm going to click up here again and press F6, and I'm going to change that to a four. Right, so we're going to go ahead and publish this movie, and it's Control and Enter on a PC or Command and Enter on a Mac. Let me do that. And as you can see, it's going 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's because it's looping. And the reason it's looping is because we haven't got a stop action at the beginning of the timeline to stop the movie clip at the beginning. It's just going to keep looping. If I click on one of these buttons here, it will go to and stop on frame 2, go to and stop on frame 3, go to and stop frame 4, and so on. But Flash works in loops. So when as soon as it's finished the timeline, if it hasn't had a command to stop it, it will go back to frame 1 again. So I'm going to close that down, and then I'm going to go over to the timeline, insert a new layer. I'm going to call this layer AS for action script. Left click in the first frame. And down here I'm going to type stop, open bracket, close bracket, and semicolon. Publish it now, and it stopped on frame 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's basically how to create a simple bare bones four page website. If you fancy having a go at trying to do it in under 50 seconds, go and have a look on my YouTube channel and see if you can do that. Several of my students have been able to get it under 40 seconds now, and so have I. But it's a very geeky thing to do, um, but it's good fun, and see if you can do it. Thanks for watching.